Welcome everyone to the Ionic React Crash Course. This is gonna get you up to speed, learning all things about Ionic and React, and how to get started building a project using React and Ionic. For more details, go to ionicframework.com slash React. Before we get into things, for those who don't know, Ionic is a framework for building cross-platform apps, targeting native iOS, native Android, and the web through technologies like progressive web apps. It powers roughly 20% of all the apps in the iOS app store and in Google Play, and there's over 5 million developers out there building with Ionic every day. So if Ionic is the UI framework, what is Ionic React? Well, Ionic React is a collection of the Ionic components wrapped as React components. You import them into your project and use them as any other standard React library. When building apps with React and Ionic, you're using tooling provided by React Scripts. So the same base project that you would get from Create React App still is applied here. And when you want to integrate with routing solutions, we integrate with React Router by providing our own Ionic React Router package. This gives you all the animations and transitions that you would expect from Ionic, but integrated with React's own routing solutions. With all that said, the real simple answer is Ionic React is just React. You're building your apps using React components and using all the tooling and packages available in the React ecosystem and just using Ionic as the UI for your app. Let's take a look at adding Ionic to an existing React project before using the Ionic CLI. To get started, let's go over to our terminal and then use NPX to create a new React project with the template of TypeScript. Now TypeScript is optional, but we at Ionic are huge fans of TypeScript and highly suggest that you use it for your projects. With our project created, we can CD into the app, and then we can add Ionic React as a dependency. With Ionic installed, let's open up our editor and go to our main app component. Let's also open up a new terminal and run yarn start to start our live reload server. From here, we're going to want to start to import a few things. Our first import is going to be the Ionic CSS bundle. This is going to include all the forms, layouts, and utilities from Ionic's own styles. Next, we're also going to want to import things from at Ionic React. This will be the location for all of our React components, and we will start off by importing Ion app, Ion content, and close that out. With our imports in place, we can essentially replace the entire JSX in this app component with our Ion app. And inside of there, we will place our Ion content. And then we will just render an H1 that says, hello world. When we save, our app will update using some of the placeholder contents and layouts from an Ionic app. If we start to import other components like Ion header, Ion toolbar, and Ion title, we can start to create a more app-like layout using these components. Here we'll render an Ion header, and inside of that we'll render an Ion toolbar, and then inside of our toolbar we'll render an Ion title with the content being my app. When we save, we'll start to get a more app-like layout with our header bar. With this in place, we can start to utilize React concept like use state to create some kind of functionality for our app. With our use state declaration set up, we can come down to our ion content and instead of rendering hello world, we'll just render the state and then we'll also render two ion buttons. 
and import them from Ionic React. With our buttons in place, we'll just create a on-click handler. And in this handler, we will say set state state plus one. And in our second button, we will set add on click set state state minus one. And then the inner text will be decrease. And the inner text for the other button will be increase. With our app saved, when we go over to the browser, we can click increase and we'll get the nice elevated action from our buttons that you would expect to get in material design. If we were to go over to our developer tools and then set the user agent to be an iPhone, we'll get a very iOS looking feel to our app. The hover actions and the click actions from our buttons now change, as well as the title being centered in the header bar. Now, if you're thinking that everything in here seems pretty standard for a React project, well, that's kind of the point. Ionic React is just building a React app. You just happen to be using the Ionic components to create your UI and create those interactions between all of your different components. While it is technically possible to build an app using Create React app and managing things without the Ionic CLI, you do miss out on a big piece of the Ionic ecosystem. So the official way going forward is to create apps using the Ionic CLI. To use the Ionic CLI and create a project, we'll open up a new terminal. In here, we'll just say Ionic start my Ionic React app. And then we'll give it the starter template of tabs. Now we could just enter this and then we'll be prompted to pick a framework. Since this is about React, we will select React and then hit enter, and then also be prompted to ask if we want to integrate Capacitor. For this, we'll just say yes, and we'll let our CLI handle installing all the dependencies for us. With the project created, we will CD into my Ionic React app, open up a new terminal instance and run Ionic serve and then also open up my editor to take a look at what the project's layout is. Now our project structure is still very familiar to a React developer who has been using Create React app. We are creating this public directory, a source directory, as well as the app.tsx file for our root app component. If we were to look at our root app component, we are importing more components from Ionic React, as well as this Ionic React router component. If we look further down inside of the app itself, we have our Ion app, as well as this Ionic React router. This is our wrapper component for React router and allows us to create a stack navigation that developers using Ionic have come to know and love. Inside of the Ion tabs component, we have this Ion router outlet, which acts as the placeholder for where all of our routes will render. Following pretty standard React router setup, we have our declaration of routes using the route component, passing in the path, and then also the component that we want to render when the path matches. And then further down, we have the tab bar where we are rendering out the different tab buttons, passing in the href and then the tab that we want to connect to, as well as the icon and label for that individual tab. If we go over to our demo, we can actually tab around and update the different components as well as the URL at the top. With our app built out, we can do a full build using Ionic build, which will just run React scripts built under the hood. With our app build, we should have a build folder generated for us 
and we could deploy that to various static hosting providers like now or Firebase Hosting. If we wanted to integrate with something like Capacitor for deploying a native project, we could just run mpx cap add iOS and then run mpx cap open iOS to deploy our app to either our phone or simulator or create an archive build for App Store submission. Now, there is a lot more to cover with Ionic and React, so be sure to check out the Ionic React Quick Start Guide as well as the Guide to Navigation in Ionic React. Both will be linked in a card up above, so be sure to click them and check it out. As for any other resources, again, please check out ionicframework.com slash react. For more videos and content about Ionic, be sure to subscribe to this channel to get notified when new videos get published.